This is number 13 in our series on the book, The Man Who Tapped the Secrets of the Universe, the story of Walter Russell. This one is entitled, Living with Purpose. A sense of purpose is one of the qualities that empowers us to succeed in life. And he's going to introduce this quality to us on two different levels. First, intent, and then living with purpose. And it can make a real difference in your life. If you enjoy watching, please click the like button, then subscribe to our channel, and uh, you might also want to share with your friends. If you wish to make a donation to Unity Orlando, go to our website, unityorlando.org, and click on the Donate Now button. So let's go down this path, learning to live with purpose. We're up to the fourth principle. That is the principles of how you express your own inner genius. No visitors, right? So I don't have to go through the preamble. If there was anybody who knew how to express inner genius, it was Walter. He took on everything. The Leonardo da Vinci of our age. But what he said is that each of us should be able to do this also in our own lives. We should be able to take on anything we want. Anything that your heart desires. In unity we say, all desire comes from God. Now, first time I heard that one, I thought, I can think of a few that might not have. But we get around that by saying sometimes we don't interpret it well. But the basic desire, whether it's for love, for abundance, for service, for giving of ourselves, for importance, which basically means I just want to fulfill my role in life, except we get carried away with it sometimes. The basic desire for all of this is your soul desiring to express itself. And what Walter is basically saying is that just as he showed in his life, anytime he had a desire, he expressed it fully and successfully. It's time for us to realize we can do that too. And in this fourth step, he says, that which empowers you to, to truly be successful in creating the life that your soul desires to live, in creating something beautiful in this world, in expressing your inner genius and being able to do anything you truly want to take on. That fourth principle is having a deep sense of purpose. Now, he's going to hit this from two angles, actually, or at least I'm going to hit it from two angles. In this place, he talks about the idea of being clear on your purpose when you go after a task. He's talking about one-pointedness, he's talking about commitment, and more than anything, he is talking about a very abstract quality that is one of the most powerful that you can use in order to create in your life intent. Intent must be clear, if you have conflicting intentions, intent is not clear. Intent must be clear, it must be concentrated, it must be putting your whole being behind whatever it is you pursue. And we call that expressing purpose. It must have something that you can put your whole being behind. So, on one end we're looking about intent, because intent is put into all of the projects that we take on in our lives. But this actually evolves, and it evolves as we, as we look at 
all of the areas where we would place intent, we begin to put a pattern together that we call purpose. Your purpose in living. If there is a deep sense of purpose behind what you're pursuing, now the energies of the universe are with you. So here, let's see what Walter has to say first about it. Let's see, it's on uh, page 49 of this little book we've been using. A deep and genuine purpose. As I've said before, successful men of all ages, and please understand, when I grew up, the word man or men was used to mean mankind, or as we say today, humankind. So please understand, whenever we say men, we mean women also. We mean men and women. Humanity. Here we go. A deep and genuine purpose. As I have said before, successful men of all ages have learned to multiply themselves by gathering thought energy into a high potential and using it in the direction of the purpose intended. Let me use an illustration of the gathering together of the powder behind the bullet. The charge behind the bullet can either be used for the purpose intended or dissipated uselessly. The wise hunter sees to it that each element which contributes to the success of his hunt is right. He's given concentrative thought and preparation for days to every detail upon which his success depends. You have to gather your energy together in the same manner, conserving it and insulating it from dissipation in every direction other than that of your purpose. You know, concentration is a big part of what uh, Walter describes. He's saying you intensify thought energy by giving it one-pointedness. One of the scriptures I'm not going to quote today, because I forgot about it. (laughs) While I was writing them all up. Is that if thine eye be single, your whole life will be filled with light. If you can create that one-pointedness. Another version is, if thine light be bright. If your attention is only upon God. If it is only upon the light. If it is only upon the goodness in your life. You are living a very powerful life. Because that is your concentration. That is where your intent is very, very clear. Clear intent is the sense of purpose behind the endeavor. And it has to be an intent that you feel good about, that you are not guilty about, that you are not in conflict about. This is how we dissipate that energy. Remember, Walter's saying, here you got the bullet, but you can have an explosion, and if the chamber is open, it just goes out the chamber, right? No bullet flies. Maybe I'm not as good at guns as I ought to be. But the bottom line is it has to be directed. That energy has to be directed toward the bullet. And your energy has to be directed toward your objective. All of it concentrated and directed together. That is what purpose does. You've got to com- uh, co- commit your complete attention to what you want to attain. Most of us want to demonstrate prosperity, but spend three quarters of our time worrying about not having it. Hey, your charge is being dissipated all over the place. No concentrated energy. It says, Create intent. Put the entire thrust of your being in the direction toward where you're going. Put all energy forward toward what you're trying to accomplish. Do every preparation. That means in thought and physical, and in the physical world. 
Yes, do the physical preparations. Do you know how many people pray to win the lottery but have no idea what they do with the money when they get it? They say, I don't think that'll be a problem. I can think of thousands of things to do. No, I want you to plan it out thoroughly. Not that you'll win the lottery, but you might. See, abundance can come from all directions. There was a time, this is a story and I probably shouldn't tell it, but there was a time when I was trying to prove that you could dream lottery numbers. The truth is, I got very good at it. I could dream one every time. I explained to God that was not good enough. (laughs) Then I got to the time where I dreamt three, and I got five bucks. And here I was trying again, and in the midst... I thought, I'm going to dream the numbers, and I was working so hard at it, and then I had this dream. And basically, it said, I was in this library, there was this bookshelf in front of me, and it said, count the books, and you'll have your numbers. And I'm sitting there trying to count, and I woke up. (laughs) And I thought, well, what good is that? So I then went and I uh, said, well, maybe it was symbolic. It kind of looks like one of the bookcases in my office. And I went in and counted, and I couldn't come up with numbers that were right. I mean, they, some of the numbers were not numbers that are acceptable. Oh, can't be that. And finally, I'm sitting there contemplating, why would I have this dream? And the realization just dawns on me. Count the books. Basically, it was quit trying to win the lottery and write what's inside of you. That's your path, not the lottery. So, consequently, I quit trying to dream numbers at that point. I still think you can. (laughs) It's just not my purpose. (laughs) The bottom line... Though I've not necessarily fulfilled the edict. I suppose I'm a lazy soul in some ways. I know where my purpose lies. And knowing where your purpose lies is so much more important than winning a prize. Because it is the prize. It's that will con- that will continually keep you on track for doing with your life what you want most to do it. Avoid dissipating your energies and that is the hardest command around. The world will try to distract you in a thousand different ways. But if your intent is clear and you are unwilling to give it up, it will eventually be fulfilled in your life. Maybe not entirely the way you envisioned it, because sometimes God has a better idea. But the energies of what you desire will be fulfilled. You may not win the lottery. Instead, you may have to write your books. So, Let's go over some scriptures. Let's start with Joshua 24, 15. This is one that I use constantly because we in unity were often uh, asked, why is it that you don't, you know, you don't, we get accused of representing the devil and I'm going, we don't even believe in him. (laughs) And when I say, oh, if you aren't on the lookout for evil, well, there's evil in the world, but it's man-made. We don't give it on par with God. But if you don't concentrate on evil, evil will get you. And my response is, Joshua 24, 15, As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We will serve God. That means my attention is going to be on God. I ain't putting my attention on something that does not represent divine will. Okay? And that's where we come from. But this is a deep sense 
of purpose. If you truly are committed to this, this begins to put purpose underneath your life. That sense of, my life is lived in order to serve God, so that divine, the divine can express through me, uni- excuse me uniquely. Now, in Philippians 3, 13 through 14, Paul shows what clear intent is about. It's a commitment that keeps you centered on where you're going no matter what's happening. Often, demonstrating the life we want to live, demonstrating something beautiful and something wonderful, is going to take perseverance. It it may take years, though we're not going to limit you to long periods of time. Sometimes things happen instantly. But are you willing to go the distance? Philippians 3, 13 and 14, Paul writes, My brethren, I do not consider that I've reached the goal. But this one thing I do know, forgetting those things which are behind, I strive for those things which are before me. I press toward the goal to receive the prize of the victory of God's highest calling through Jesus Christ. He is pressing on towards full spiritual awakening. He's pressing on towards Christ consciousness. And the fact that it seems a long way off has nothing to do with anything. That is my intent. That is where my intention is connected. And yes, it may be a long trip, but that's where I'm going. That's the intent of your being. Not just an intention. What The road to that place we don't believe in is paved with uh, good intentions, right? Intentions. But intent has commitment behind it. Intention doesn't, and that's where that phrase comes from, the lack of commitment. So, let's talk about Jesus. Several times, he stated his purpose. He understood his purpose. He knew why he was here. He lived a totally empowered life. And he wanted his disciples to be just as empowered. Luke 4, 17 through 19 and 21. He goes into the temple. And the book of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. And Jesus opened the book and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because of this, he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim release to the captives and sight to the blind, to strengthen with forgiveness those who are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your your ears. Well, this freaked everybody out. He was willing to say, My purpose is to fulfill the highest within. My purpose is to lift the consciousness of humanity. And if you're following in his footsteps, that's your purpose too in the end. Every single one of us share that purpose. But he stated it more succinctly in John 10, 11. I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly. I am here to lift humanity. So why are you here? Let's start with the idea of clear intent. You must have clear intent for anything you truly wish to accomplish. Okay? Anything you truly wish to accomplish, you must have clear intent. Now, What do we mean by that? Oh, I'm going to go back a couple of times to uh, Native American examples. They just fit into it really well today. Many a Native American warrior, particularly the experienced ones, when they were encountering a battle with another group, 
would go out and would stake themselves to the ground with a cord tied around their ankle and the other end of it around the stake. Basically, when they drove that stake into the ground, they said, I will not leave this ground. I have staked it out. I have driven my stake into this place and I will not leave it. And so they'd battle from this spot. And all of their compatriots were rather inspired by this because if they fell back for a while, he dies. So you better. You know, there was, it was an express, expression of absolute commitment. If you want to accomplish something, you better stake yourself to that goal. Stake it in. You see, that's what I call the intent of your being. There is a sense of total commitment that you can feel. I am not talking about an intellectual process. I am talking about something that is experiential. It is a feeling. It is an energy state. It is a point at which you say, this is where I'm going. This is my intent. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. That's why I'm here. So why are you here? Now, we got all kinds of projects going on in our life. And we need to be able to look at them and say, my entire being is behind this. I am totally committed to this objective. As opposed to intention, which says, oh, I'd kind of like to do this. Intent is very different. It's like, and the way I like to image it, is that essentially in that moment, you are attaching an invisible unbreakable cord to the goal. And life can knock you around, life can knock you back, but nothing can disconnect you from where you're going. And if you know this, and you have made this commitment, even the events that seem to knock you away from your goal eventually become part of taking you where you need to go to accomplish it. But if your intent is broken, if the cord snaps, all is lost. If your intent is clear enough, it's an unbreakable cord. Now, what do I mean by this? Intent is far more powerful than the words you speak, though we think you need to be careful of the words you speak or even the feelings that you have. Though we will tell you, if you affirm, I am prosperous, and feel lack to the depth of your being, lack wins. Got it? But intent is even stronger than either of those two. My favorite story along this line is that of a little girl in the early Unity churches, way, way back in the early 1900s, there was this little girl attending church. And at home, she had a problem with mice. There were mice running around the house, and she really didn't like the little creatures. So consequently, she got from church that she ought to be able to pray and make the mice disappear. So she thought, what will I pray? And she was a young little girl. What will I pray? Well, I know. I'll use that really powerful prayer that they pray every Sunday morning at Unity. And she, so she begins, divine love through me blesses and multiplies the mice. <laughs> and the mice disappeared. Her intent was clear. Her words were not. Got it? 
Is your intent clear? Place your whole being behind your goals. If you're not willing to put your entire self behind it, please don't waste your energy. Okay. So we look at our goals and we think, okay, I've got this and I am committed to accomplishing this in my life and I am got this and I'm committed to accomplishing that. And we probably have a whole list of goals. They are not a wish list. They are an intent list. This is my intent. But you know... What happens is that intent, intent evolves into purpose. Purpose is this deeper sense of intent. What is the intent not just of this particular project, but of your life? An intent that embraces all the projects. Purpose. If you live a purpose-filled life, you will find that success becomes something you become very, very familiar with. This is one of Walter's, Russell's secrets, you might say, in that he knew his purpose was to express the creativity inside of him, so he constantly did. No matter what area of life he took on, it was his purpose to express all of that inner potential that was inside of him. And I would say that's your purpose too. To express all the inner potential inside of you. And each of us are unique, so it will come out a little different in every single one of our lives. In the end, purpose is the way we serve others or serve the whole. And if you think about it, if you realize that all spiritual power comes out of the consciousness of oneness and all destructive energies that destroy life and destroy and rob you of your spiritual power come out of the belief in separation, that we are separate beings, then you realize that in this sense of serving others or serving the whole, I'm not just living a life to make me happy. I'm not just living a life so that I survive. I am living a life that makes a contribution to the whole. And if you know this, you just moved into that consciousness of oneness out of which real power flows. So it's no surprise that spiritual power is based upon the sense of entering a consciousness of service. Now that can take many different roles. And we're going to try to get into, for a second, into the realization of what purpose can really be all about. But first I want to back up and kind of put a little bit of, uh, put a story behind it that kind of shows you what we're trying to accomplish here. Years ago, one of the books I was into was a book called Rolling Thunder. I forget the uh, author's name at this point. But he was describing his encounters with the uh, American Indian uh, medicine man, Rolling Thunder, and kind of doing a biography on him from, that he had seen. And there were some pretty wild stories in there, many of which he had personally observed. And this was one of them. There was a healing that took place at this big gathering, and Rolling Thunder showed up at this gathering. But one of the guys who was one of the young men that was trying to help put this, anyway, he was involved in it in some way, had actually fallen in the process, hurt his leg, and his leg was, I, I guess, pretty messed up. In any case, at that point, someone suggested to him, and they finally approached Rolling Thunder and said, will you take this on and do a healing ceremony for this young man? You know, and He says, will you do it? And he approached the young man eventually and said, okay, let's figure out whether I'm going to or not. He says, before I can determine whether I'm going to work with you in a healing, I must hear 
why you want to be healed. Oh, I want to feel better. That's not good enough. Why do you want to be healed? What is the purpose behind your healing? And eventually he came around to saying, you know, if I have my mobility back, I will be able to go on about these activities I've been doing that, are ser- that I feel are serving humanity. And he kind of went back through the way he was doing what his, making his contribution to goodness in the world. Rolling Thunder says, fine, now we can do your healing. And yes, there was a healing. But that's the side point. The real point is, before you take anything on, ask yourself, why do you want to accomplish it? Put a sense of real purpose behind it. And you say, well, I think I I want to take this on so I can feel better. (laughs) Okay, now let's move on. Feeling better, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. The world should feel better, and I'm part of the world. But let's see if we can expand it out a little more. Do you want to, uh, where is it, I've listed them. Why do you want to be prosperous? Why do you want to be healed? Why do you want to mate? And why do you want to be successful? So I can be happy. That's a good start. But please don't stop there. Everyone should be happy. There's nothing wrong with that. But let's expand it out a little more. Why do you want to be prosperous? Because I'm going to tithe. And the more tithing is set up on the idea That as I prosper, I give more away. And there is this divine purpose woven into (laughs) making money. Amazing. Demonstrate. I want to demonstrate and create a beautiful life. Okay, good. Now this is what I have to give to humanity. All I have to give to humanity is my life. And I want to give something worth giving. I want to show what spiritual principle will be like if it's moving in and through a life. I want to show how good things can be. Okay, we're getting somewhere now. You're at least giving yourself to the world. How about you're going to give joy, gratitude, and goodness to life? This enables me to give more joy, gratitude, and goodness to life. This enables me to fulfill more of my inner creativity, to be able to fulfill some of the desires that I have inside of me to express. Okay, good. We've got God moving through you and expressing your inner creativity. I want to create beauty, and creating beauty is a divine assignment that we all have. I want to create the most beautiful life I have, I can, I can have. I want to create beauty in the world around me. I want to create order. All of these are noble enterprises. Get it straight inside of yourself. What you feel, why you are willing to pour your entire soul into this project. Because once you've got that clear, now we're not having all those dissipating thoughts that run off in this way and that way and the other way. Now we can have clear intent, a deep-seated sense of purpose to this very mundane project I may be taking on, but it's part of my deep-seated sense of giving myself to the world. Okay? This is what puts the power behind it. Now you're going to go out and you're going to do whatever you can do. You are going to put all your prayer effort into it. You are going to put your thought energy into it. You are going to keep everything concentrated and work toward it. And every time life, you stake one step forward and life knocks you back two steps, you simply get up and keep moving and say, that must be part of getting there because I'm still connected to the goal.
And if you keep that intent, you'll get there. Now, so the question is, what is your sense of purpose in life? Purpose will intensify and empower the life you're living. But what's your purpose? That's usually where we get a little fuzzy. <laughs> well, what is my purpose? Duh, let me think for a while. You know, um, let me make it simple for you. Your purpose is to be who you are. Wherever you're planted. That's first and foremost. Be who you really are. Not all this other stuff. Not this personality. To be a child of God where I am planted in life. Life needs beings of light to simply be there. Years ago, I was wrestling with purpose. You know, at one point, uh, a young YOUer said to me, have you ever had the experience where you suddenly dedicated your whole life to God? And I had to question for a second. You know, I don't remember one time when that happened. But I realized it was absolutely and wholeheartedly true. It had, taken, it had been done in increments throughout my life. So here I am, I'm in Fort Pierce, I'm a unity minister, and I've come to, at that time, and things have changed dramatically in the last 30 years. But at that time, that was pure, I love my truck country. Stuff went down there that seemed pretty primitive and pretty um, backward. Okay, in terms of consciousness, in terms of race relations, in terms of you just, w whatever. And I sat there when I first arrived, and I said, God, why am I here? Am I being punished? <laughs> and finally, what came through was, this is your town, take it. And so I just kind of would laugh. I bought myself a truck. This is my town. And I just go, wow, this is where I live. This is my town. Now, things have changed phenomenally, okay? I don't mean to demean Fort Pierce. They're a beautiful seaside village now. And I was a part of that. Because at that time, we were the only light center in the Fort Pierce area. There really wasn't much else. Now everybody on every corner is a guru. But back then, we were it. And I came to understand my purpose was fourfold. Number one, my primary purpose was to serve God by being who I am, where I am. My, I understood my first and primary purpose was to be in Fort Pierce. And your first and primary purpose is to be here in Orlando. Okay? You are here. Your purpose is to be here until you are given news to go somewhere else. Got it? And your purpose is to be who you are. Because silently, your spiritual presence can make all the difference in the world. This is your silent agreement with God. I am here because you placed me, and I will be who I am. Number two, my second was, second understanding of purpose was to serve God in every situation. And that meant as I went around town, as I bought my groceries, as I did everything, everything I did with my life, I needed to understand I was God's messenger wherever I went, and so were you. And my third sense of purpose, you would have thought I would have called my first, and that was to serve Unity Church of Fort Pierce, Unity of Fort Pierce. It was third. 
Now, it was there, and I did the best job I could. And my fourth sense of purpose was to live a life that demonstrates spiritual principle. To create a beautiful life. So I turn to you and I say, let's talk about your purpose. Several of these translate without any problem whatsoever. Your first and foremost purpose is to be who you are, where you are. You're fulfilling your purpose by being true to yourself. Please understand that self of a large S, not a small S. I once bumped into a compatriot in the ministry who insisted he was being true to his self, but he was being true to his selfish self. That's not what we're talking about. True to who you are deep inside. Secondly, your job is to serve God, the good, the whole, with everything you do. To let your light shine. And thirdly, part of letting that light shine is to create a beautiful life. This is where prosperity and abundance fits in. You're not trying to be better than your neighbors. You are trying to show what spirit moving through your life can do as a demonstration. That type of thing is contagious. Other people pick it up and begin to see that they can do it too. Beyond that, the things that most people say are my purpose. My purpose is to build a hospital. My purpose is to do this. These are expressions of your purpose, but they are not your purpose. They can yank that project out from under you, and another project will surface through which you can express yourself, through which you can express yourself. That is more than anything what Walter Russell was able to demonstrate. He could express himself through painting. He could express it through sculpture. He could express it through science, architecture, horsemanship, or ice skating. But he could express his purpose. His job was to express himself through whatever lay in front of him. And that created an exceptional life. And that is the type of exceptional life that each of us wants to create. So I got five steps, and basically they repeat what I said, so we're just going through them. Number one, list your objectives in life, both the temporary and the long term, and get clear intent on what you want to create. If you have no idea what you want to do with your life, your life is one of the balls on the billiard table that just gets knocked around by life wherever it knocks you. Make the list. Know what it is you want to do with your life. Get clear intent. Number two, examine how these goals relate to what you have to give to the world. You each have something to give to your world. You give yourself to the world, your essence, your creativity. That's all you are here for is to give yourself to the world. So how does this goal relate to that? Get clear on that in each case. Number three, create an overall statement of your purpose in life and the life you intend to create. One is on the abstract level, one is on the expression level. What is your purpose in life? What is the life you intend to create? What beauty are you, are you creating? Fourth, at the beginning and end of each day, go over your purpose, the life you intend to create, and your individual projects, those prayer goals you've got on a list, and attach the intent of your being to each and feel your commitment. Feel your absolute commitment. This is where I'm going. Life can knock me down. Life can knock me back. But it cannot break the cord. This is where I'm going. And five, live each day doing whatever you can do on the background of this commitment. If you can do that, your energies have been concentrated in the chamber and your bullet flies with the power behind it to reach its goal. And you become a powerful spiritual being expressing a wonderful physical life. Which in the end, I suppose is everyone's goal. Everyone's purpose. So let's relax for just a moment.
Father, fill us with the strength to see clearly what we want to do with our lives. And the strength to make the full commitment to bring it into full expression. To go the distance, whatever it takes. Thy will be done through each of us. Amen. This is Reverend Bob Marshall. And I want to thank you for joining us on this journey through exploring how to tap into the secrets of the universe. I also want to thank Brian Eitenayer, who provided the music for our program. Thank you again.